platform in Dubai on a drilling rig was caused by the wrong size blowout preventer being fitted. The blowout preventer is the piece that sits on top of the casing on a drilling rig while you're drilling. And it is a series of rubber rams and one metal one. The rubber rams will close around the tubing called the high drill. And it's like a, an orange that's open. When you put the pressure on, it closes and it seals off any gas or oil that's coming out. If things get really tough after that, you can close what they call the blind ram, which is a sharp metal plate that will cut through the tubing and completely separate it. Okay, so this rig was drilling. They were using four inch tubing and the blowout preventer was sized for four and a half inches. So when they had a kick of gas on the well, the driller closed the blowout preventer. It closed, but it closed like that. And you could still see through the middle where it hadn't closed completely around the tubing because the tubing was too small. Gas came up, blew the tubing out of the hole. The tubing hit the derrick and sparked and 40,000 barrels of oil was on fire. Very, very scary. 40,000 barrels of oil going up a pipe makes a lot of noise. If you don't believe me, take a gas cylinder, open it and ignite it and listen to the noise. And then imagine that with 40,000 barrels behind it. You couldn't hear yourself think. And it took several months before we could kill that well and get the field back. Platform was gone. We had to put a new platform in. There are gentlemen available or have been available like uh, Red Adair, oh, yeah, to yes. Red Adair was <laughs> solve there. his problems. So you personally met him? I met yeah? him. Uh -huh. um, he was a very nice guy. He was very brave. He was good at what he did. But in those days, this was 1970, 71, there was only Red Adair. Nowadays, there are several... Uh, kill control companies, Boots and Coots, Red Adair Company is still going, but under some other leadership. But when he started, he was the only one. And he took a lot of risks, and he did a lot of things that nobody even thought of. He killed a very famous one in Colombia, where they, had, they built two towers, one either side of the well that was on fire, suspended a cable, put a trolley on the cable, loaded it with explosives, pulled it to the middle over the fire and then dropped the explosives on the fire and it blew the fire out. There were very many innovative types of control that he used. Later on, when you had the scenario in Kuwait after the invasion by the Iraqis, there were so many wells on fire that they didn't have time for these sort of things. So a method was developed by a Russian company of using jet engines mounted on a tractor, on a big trailer, and they fired up the jet engines and there was so much force and exhaust coming from them that it blew the fire out that way. But, you know, I'm sure in another 10 years there will be other things you can do. Probably just point a wi-fi at it and it will go out <laughs> everything nowadays is wi-fi and electronic control but all the time in this business there are new ideas new ways which is why it's very important that you keep up to date with it if you're working here you can't say well we'll do this like we did 10 years ago because 10 years ago things were not the same you didn't have the technology 10 years ago You didn't have the expertise. Now we've got it. Use it. Even if you go to the other extreme and look at warfare. In 1914-18 war, there were millions of men killed in the trenches because that was the way you fought in those days. Nowadays, you have somebody sitting in an air-conditioned porter cabin in California driving a drone and he drops a few Hellfire missiles on somebody And that's it. Game over. 
and he's quite happy. He's sitting in his air conditioning with his coffee. Doesn't get hurt at all. They might lose a few drones, but that's a piece of equipment, not a problem. It's certainly not the same as losing millions of men.